Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Great Plains Association for College Admission Counseling's Virtual College Fair. We are excited that you're here. We have a great group of colleges and presenters lined up for you this afternoon. So before we get started, I just have a few housekeeping items that I'm going to run through. Um, first, your cameras and microphones are turned off, so don't worry, we can't see you or hear you. Um, hopefully you can see and hear us okay. If for some reason you can't, send us a message using the Q&A button um, and we'll be happy to help troubleshoot that with you. Speaking of the Q&A button, that is your best way and really your only way to engage with our presenters this afternoon. So as you have questions throughout the session, feel free to drop those in the Q&A. Um, you can start that now, you can do it while they're presenting, or you can do that after they're presenting. Um, they will be on the entire session and happy to answer those questions as they come in throughout the entire 45 minutes. Um, this is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check the StriveScan website again for any additional sessions you might be interested in. And then the, pre or the recording of this presentation will be available on that same website within about a week or so. Um, so before we get started, I wanted to show you what our schedule looks like for today. So we are session B2 right in the middle there. Um, so we are going to start with Oklahoma State University. We'll hear from Langston University, Drake University, Northwest Missouri State University, Southern Illinois University, and Missouri University of Science and Technology. And so with that, we are going to kick things over to Caitlin from Oklahoma State. Perfect. Thank you so much. Let me go ahead and share my screen with you all. All right, so I am Caitlin Middleton and I am the admissions counselor for Oklahoma State. Um, so let's just jump right in. This will work. Here we go. So we are located in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Stillwater, Oklahoma is about an hour away from Tulsa and about an hour away from Oklahoma City. So we are right in between our big uh, metropolitan areas here in the state of Oklahoma. So OSU has about 22,000 undergraduate students. So we are considered a mid-sized university. 26% um, of our students do come from out of state. And so if you're coming from out of state, you will not be alone in that journey. Um, we have 50 states represented and over 100 countries represented here on campus. So we are diverse in our student body. Um, we are a land grant institution. So basically that just means that Oklahoma State, the, the land that our school is on was granted to us by um, Oklahoma State's government. And so that just gives us more opportunities to give out scholarships and really do hands-on research learning here at, um, at Oklahoma State. So that kind of sets us apart from other schools because you're going to get that hands-on learning at an undergraduate level, whereas at other schools, you might not get that until you're working on a post-graduation degree. So we have over 200 majors across five academic colleges, and I'll go into a little bit more of the colleges um, here in just a little bit, but something unique about OSU is that no matter what your major is, if you're wanting to go a pre-professional route like pre-vet, pre-med, um, pre-law, you can add that to any major here. So there is no um, specific major you have to go to, to be on that um, course. So. Like I said, I'll go into just a couple of the, of the colleges that we have. So Ferguson College of Ag, this is really popular um, because we are the only vet school in the state of Oklahoma. So that's what's unique about OSU. Um, we do have a small and large animal hospital here on campus. So you're going to get that hands-on learning. Um, if you are interested in our pre-vet program, we also have a fast track program. So you can start um, vet school as soon as you're done, you'll be on the done with your undergrad, you'll be on the program to start that immediately. So College of Engineering and Architecture, this is another super popular college here at Oklahoma State. In the bottom right hand corner, this is our Endeavor Lab. So if you have not been to campus, I really encourage you to come and check it out. So our Endeavor Lab is a building that's full, full of labs for hands-on research and hands-on learning for our engineering and architecture students. So in here, you're going to see labs full of computers, labs full of 3D printers, um, wind tunnels, water tunnels, so lots of opportunities for that um, learning. 
So our application is located on our website, okstate.edu. We are not on Common App, and that's because your application to the university doubles as your application for scholarships. So you'll just complete our application on our website. Um, we will need an official high school transcript that can be sent directly to us from your counselor through email, parchment, um, anything like that. ACT and SAT test scores. Um, we don't have a preference on which one you send, whichever one you're more comfortable with. We are optional for fall 2021. We're still looking to see how that will play out for um, 2022 and um, beyond that. So keep a lookout on that. And then $40 application fee or fee waiver. Now the two things listed at the bottom are going to be for scholarships. So for all scholarship applications here at OSU, all we need is essays and a leadership and involvement resume that will put you in the pool for all scholarships. So it's really a streamlined process. We have two different ways to be admitted to OSU. We have comprehensive review, which means that we're going to look at everything that you submit. We're gonna look at um, essays, transcript, test score, and your leadership experience. And then we have assured admissions. So like it sounds, if you meet one of these three criteria, then you are guaranteed to be admitted to Oklahoma State. Um, so we do have our priority scholarship deadline. So um, be looking out for that. It was February 1st this year. If you're coming in next year, that will be November 1st. Um, so when you have everything in before that, you are in the pool for all scholarships. We have several different scholarship um, categories. So we have assured scholarships and then we have competitive scholarships that will come from the academic college. If you are a senior now, we will accept test scores until August 14th of 2021. So this is going to be our in-state um, assured scholarship. So just like assured admissions, if you meet this criteria, then you are going to get the scholarship that is um, associated with it. And then you can find all of this on our website. This is our out of state. So assured, if you have a 3.0 and a 24, you're going to get $10,000 per year for all four years. So there are several different ways to get involved here at Oklahoma State. We have organizations, clubs, um, all different things. There's something for everyone. We have intramurals if you're interested in that. Um, several different study abroad options in each academic college. Lots of opportunities for networking and career services. So with career services, you're going to have people helping you with your essay or with your uh, resume and mock interviews, things like that to prepare you for your time post-graduation. Um, something fun about Oklahoma State is that we are home to America's greatest homecoming. So these, what you're seeing is part of our homecoming festivities and these are house decks. Um, this is just another picture of our homecoming festivities. We do have daily campus tours, so if you're interested in coming to visit OSU, you can do that every day at 9.30 a.m., Fridays at 9.30 and 1.30, and you can just sign up for that on our website. We also have virtual options. Here's my information. You can also find your specific admissions counselor on our website. Thank you so much for having us. Great. Thank you, Caitlin. Okay, next we are going to Langston University with Kyle. Hello, everybody. I am Kyle Gregory. I am a proud 2009 graduate of Langston University. I studied English, went to law school, marched in the band, was captain of the quiz bowl team. I have seen firsthand what Langston University can do for you if you get involved. Now, let's jump right into the presentation. Langston University predates the state of Oklahoma. We were founded in 1897. We're the only historically black college in the state of Oklahoma, and that op opens up opportunity for you. For instance, did you know that Langston with 1,750 undergraduate students gets more grant money than every school in the state besides OU and OSU. So when you think about it, we get more grant money than schools that are 10 times our size. We also have elite internships. Did you know that if you want to study biology and go to medical school, we've got a partnership with Harvard Medical School. We sent students to Yale, Harvard, Stanford, UC Davis, North Texas, all across the country. And think about it from this perspective. Would you rather compete with 15 people in your major or maybe 400? If you can beat out eight people, you might get that elite internship that lands your spot in medical school. Let's keep moving. From the very start, you can stay in a private room. Centennial Court Apartments is our housing for our freshmen. You have a private room, share a bathroom with one other person, and you have a nice size living room. Year two, you move to Scholars Inn where you have a full size bed. You can see that pictured here. 
a bigger room, a bigger closet, and a nice pond in the middle than if you have a child or if you get into the honors program, you can stay in the commons, two bedroom apartment where you have your own washer and dryer stove and everything you need right there in your room. And then if you just want to save money, Young Halls are a traditional option that can save you up to $2,300 on a year. We have free tutoring in every class. So what that means for you, if you make an A, you could get paid to be the tutor. On top of that, we've got 40 plus organizations on our campus. And if we don't have what you're looking for, you can start it with eight people. Greek life, we've got eight of the divine nine on our campus. So if you want to join the Greek fraternities or sorority, you are more than welcome to apply for that your second year. And we have the largest collection of African and African-American history and artifacts in the state of Oklahoma in our Melvin B. Tolson Black Heritage Center. We have six schools of study to choose from. Our doctoral program in physical therapy has placed people with NBA teams as athletic trainers. We have a 100% graduation rate and a 100% job placement rate within that school. In addition to that, if you go to Langston first and get your undergraduate, you get preference on your application to get into the doctoral program. The five other schools we'll go into in just a second here, but we are the number one ranked HBCU for nursing if you're looking for a historically black college nursing program. And we are one of the lowest priced DSN programs in the entire nation. We're also, what a lot of people don't know about Langston, we're known internationally for our small ruminant animal research program. Our animal science and biology lab is second to none when it comes to opportunities and the technology they have in those fields. You can see a list of our majors right here, a few highlights. We talked about grant money. We keep going back to that. Rehabilitation Council got a five and a half million dollar grant. We've got a master's and an undergraduate program in that. Uh, we also, computer science is one of the, is the highest paying undergraduate degree here at Langston University. And we've got opportunities through our partner organizations to intern at Apple and get paid 25,000. There's a few other opportunities you can see here for yourself, but for the sake of time, let's keep going. Athletics wise, you have not been to a football game until you've been to a historically black college football game. We're a small school, but we pack out the home side. A 300 beast piece band comes out and I love OSU, but if you've never been to Langston's homecoming, you are missing out. It is a show. The HBCU cheerleaders, the band playing, everybody converges on the only historically black college in Oklahoma. It's an experience. On top of that, we've got club soccer. Our band scholarships are huge. We waive out of state fees if you're from one of our, if you're from out of state if you play in the band, or if you have a 3.0 grade point average. And we've grown from 45 members to 210 in two short years. Price, we have the lowest tuition of any four-year university in the state of Oklahoma. And I remember, we waive out of state fees. So even my friends from Nebraska and Kansas, you can pay less than 15,000 a year for tuition fees, room and board, and your books to attend Langston University, or 17,195 in a private room. Stop what you're doing right now. If you have a 3.5, and a 22 ACT or 1100 SAT, your entire college could be paid for. The McCabe scholarship is a four year full ride that pays your entire cost of attendance. The next one is the Regents. If you have a 3.3, this, this one is test optional, pays for your room and board all four years. Now you can't pair it with the out of state fee waiver if you're from out of state. And Thurgood Marshall College Fund also has scholarships um, for just public HBCUs. They have internships with Apple, the NBA, the NHL, for our business majors. We've got a ton of opportunities. And then the USDA 1890, where a land grant 1890 institution, four year full ride at a 3.0 and a 21 ACT if you study agriculture or related. And they use related loose, loosely. It could be economics, science, technology, math. You get a paid government internship a four year full ride, they pay for your flight, they pay for your hotel, and you work for the government. Can't hardly beat it. And lastly, we still have scholarships open. If you have a 2.5 GPA, I can guarantee you money. Just reach out to me after you apply to the university. Our application's free. A 2.4 will get you admission. We are test optional except for our full ride. If you haven't done the FAFSA, make sure you do that. And lastly, these are our contacts. Reach out to me directly, kyle.gregory at langston.edu and I can get you a scholarship within five days of applying. So apply for free online and then reach out to me. If you want the full presentation, meet us at calendly.com forward slash Langston University. Thank you for your time and L's up. Great, thanks Kyle. Okay, next up we are going to Drake University with Tyler. Thank you, Tyler, great name. I'm going to share my screen. 
There we go. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining me, us, all of us this afternoon. My name is Tyler Kohler. I'm an admission counselor here at Drake University. Drake is a four-year private university located in Des Moines, Iowa. Arguably the most important figure on campus is Griff too. He is our live mascot. As you can see, he is arguably the cutest bulldog there is. And yes, he's wearing a Drake Letterman jacket. And if you need some more serotonin in your life, definitely encourage you to follow him on Instagram. He is the best and you can see him around campus. Um, and I always know when he's at campus because he posts on Instagram, him getting his uh, puppuccino from Starbucks. Some quick facts about Drake. We have just under 3000 undergrad students. Uh, 10 to 1 student to faculty ratio where none of our classes are taught by teaching assistants or graduate assistants. An average class size of 21, 100 plus undergraduate programs from five colleges and we also have a law school, 140 different organi student organizations, 16 division one sports which all Drake students get to attend for free. 70% of our students are from out of state and for the class of 2019 we have a 98.1% accomplishment rate meaning 98.1% of them were either employed or in graduate school within six months of graduation. And that is based on a response rate of over 97%. And for the class of 2020, we are actually finalizing their accomplishment rate right now. So Des Moines, who knew? Of course we didn't, because that's where Drake is. Um, and Drake is, you know, and the capital of Iowa and the population of Des Moines is over 600,000 and it's continuously growing. And if you're looking to do something in your board, you will definitely find it um, whether on campus or in the city of Des Moines, as you can see here in the photos, we are big foodies here in Des Moines, whether that's Drake Diner, which is a, literally a block away, there's a Jimmy John's, there's Bong's Pizza, or there's all these different options as well, right downtown, which was in the last picture, which downtown is about 10 minutes away. Um, if you're looking for internships, research opportunities, uh, Drake in the city of Des Moines is definitely the place to be for that. So can you picture yourself at Drake? I hope so. So there are two ways for you to apply. Both are free, either directly through drake.edu slash apply or through the comment app. We don't have a preference. It is whatever is easiest for you. So our application opened on August 1st. Obviously, it's past December 1, so that is our early action priority deadline, but our regular deadline is March 1st, which is coming up here shortly. So definitely encourage you to apply if you're a senior right now and have not already. So when you're applying either through Drake or through the Common App, there are two pathways that you can choose from. One is the test score pathway, very, very traditional, submit your transcript, your ACT, your SAT score, and then there's an optional letters of recommendation and essay. Or you can go test optional pathway. So then you would submit a transcript and then instead of submitting your ACT or SAT score, you would either have an interview with your admission counselor or write an essay. With the essay, there is no like Drake essay, it's whatever you wanna really talk about that's gonna help us learn more about you. And then you can see that the recommendation there is again optional. We don't have a preference if you wanna go test score, or test optional, whatever's easiest for you. We've actually been test optional for five plus years now, so it's nothing new to us and we review them equally the same. Um, and so it's really up to you what's best for you. This is the tuition breakdown, the room and board and fees. The room and board and fees, those are actually out of date numbers, um, but the, the cost of attendance is pretty much similar to what it is currently. Um, just so you know, Drake has the same tuition, whether you're in state or out of state. So how are we gonna help aid in this cost? So the presidential scholarship is the main merit-based scholarship here at Drake. It's anywhere from 21 to $25,000 per year for four years. And there's nothing you have to do to apply to this. Once you apply to Drake, you're automatically considered for this award. And in the last couple of years, those who applied and were admitted before March 1st, a regular deadline, received the presidential scholarship. And then for transfer students, we also have that available. Um, there we have more scholarships available. Don't have time to talk about all of them. So definitely visit the drake.edu slash scholarship to find out more scholarships. And as Kyle mentioned, definitely fill out the FAFSA. We encourage that even if you don't think you're going to get anything, it's worth a shot. You never know. $500 in Pell Grant is $500 you didn't have before and $500 you don't have to pay back later. Drake has a tuition guarantee. So whatever tuition is when you start at Drake, it will never go up during your time at Drake. And that's really important as a lot of other institutions, tuition will go up anywhere from one to 7% every year. And so it's a great point you're trying to plan for your financial future, knowing that tuition will never go up during your time at your undergraduate. We have a lot of different uh, options for you to visit, a student-led virtual tour uh, where student ambassadors take you around our virtual tour on campus, which you can see here in this photo, virtual sneak peek, which is just a general overview, a Q&A with the student panel, and actually the student-led virtual tour is a part of that. 
We have uh, virtual individual appointments. So if you wanna talk one-on-one -on -one with your counselor, definitely encourage you to sign up for one of those. And then we are also offering in-person visits. Um, so if you wanna to come to visit in campus in person, I definitely encourage that. We also have way more uh, virtual options as well and variety of in-person in options. So definitely visit that drake.edu slash visit below. So you're going to love it here. This is my content information, my email and phone number. I encourage you to reach out to me um, and I will get you connected with your counselor if it's not me. So thank you, appreciate it. I'm gonna have a great rest of your day. Great, thank you, Tyler. Okay, next up, we are going to Northwest Missouri State University. Alrighty, let me share my screen with you. Okay, here we go. Um, my name is Katie Eady. I am one of the assistant directors of admissions here at Northwest. So let's just jump into it. We'll go ahead and talk a little bit about some facts and figures about Northwest, talk about some academics, uh, talk about some student life, and then we'll, we'll touch on some financial information as well for the state. So this is what our campus typically looks like. Um, it's a pretty small campus only takes about 10 to 15 minutes to walk from one end of campus to the other. It's a very, very homey campus. You'll see that we do have a lot of trees on our campus. Uh, we are Missouri's Arboretum, so that just makes campus beautiful all year round. Right now, we do have about 7,200 students on our campus, and there's a wide range between undergraduate and graduate students. So we do have that degree field for everybody. Um, 67% uh, of our students are in state, so grew up in Missouri, live in Missouri, and then that remaining 33% is out of state. So we do get a pretty good chunk of students that come from all over the country to be at Northwest. We also do have a 12% minority population, and given that we are a college campus, our average age is 20 years old. But right now we are located in Maryville, Missouri, which is in the top northwestern corner of the state. We are happily located in between a lot of other locations. So we are about a half, an hour and a half from uh, Kansas City, two hours from Omaha, two hours from Lincoln, two and a half hours from Des Moines. So we're kind of centrally located. Uh, our town is pretty small. It's only about 12,000 people. The campus makes up about 7,000 of it. So it is a little bit quiet and a little bit sleepy at points. But we have been voted as one of the safest college towns in the country. So not only is our campus really safe, our town is really safe as well. So our university police department does a great job of keeping students, faculty, and staff safe at all times. Uh, for our academics, right now we do have a 96% placement rate. So 96% of our graduates will either obtain a job or they'll continue their education at least six months after graduating. The way we accomplish that number is by offering uh, our profession-based learning. So what we mean by that is we are a very collaborative university. We do recognize that it gets hard for students to find jobs after they've graduated because employers look for the amount of experience that they have. So we offer opportunities, internships, organizations, jobs, departments for students to work hands-on in their field while they get their degree at the same time. So our students are already leaving with three to four years of experience already under their belts. On our campus, we do have over 120 different majors and minors. A couple of our biggest schools of education are agriculture, um, education itself, uh, health science and wellness, communication and mass media, and natural sciences, amongst others. So we do try to find something for every student. Um, in order to maintain our retention rate, we do have a 78% freshman retention rate. So 78% of our freshmen are returning for their sophomore year. Again, another pretty high number. The way that we achieve this is by offering free tutoring to all students. Uh, we have programs like academic support and recovery. We've got a writing center. We've got supplemental instruction. Most of our tutors are students. If you don't wanna be hanging out with a professor, uh, we do try to offer you every tool that you need to succeed. It's really up to you on if you utilize it or not. On our campus, we do want students to get as involved as they can. So we do have over 200 different student organizations. We have a pretty extensive Greek life affiliations. We've got religious affiliations, uh, political clubs, uh, sports clubs, performing arts clubs, leadership clubs, basically anything you can think of. If we don't have something that you really want, all it takes is five students and an academic advisor and you've got your own club. 
but whenever it comes for you to apply for Northwest, make sure that you submit your GPA or your, or your transcripts and your ACT scores. The beauty about Northwest is we are a super score university. So if you take the ACT multiple times, we will take each of your highest scores in each category across the board and composite it into a whole new score because we wanna reduce your cost of tuition to make it more affordable for you to attend Northwest. This is your cost of attendance breakdown. So whether you're in-state or out-of-state, take a look at this chart. Um, this covers everything. So it'll cover all of your credit hours, it'll cover your most expensive housing, plus your silver meal plan, so it covers your room and board. It also covers textbooks and laptops, so you don't have to pay out of pocket for textbooks and laptops. It also covers access to the wellness center, the fitness center, the rec center, all of our tutoring and tickets to sporting events. So it is all inclusive, but we do try to reduce it as best as we can. So this is where your ACT score and your GPA come into play, because what we do automatically is we offer these merit-based scholarships. So we take your ACT score plus your GPA, and we calculate to see which one you can receive. If you are an out-of-state student, you can receive in-state tuition based off of your merit with our Bearcat Advantage in-state rate. So we do the same thing with your ACT score and your GPA, and you can either qualify for that green and white advantage in-state rate or the Bearcat Advantage full in-state rate. And we also offer our multicultural scholarships for students that are eligible for it based off of your merit. So we take your ACT and your GPA. All of these scholarships are stackable, automatic, and renewable. Um, you get them just for being accepted to Northwest. Uh, you can stack them on top of other uh, scholarships and they're renewable as long as you maintain your GPA and complete 24 credit hours per year. Textbooks and laptops are already included in the cost of tuition, like I said, so you don't have to pay out of pocket for them. This has saved students over $7,200 in the span of four years because this is supplied to you. We also have our um, virtual visits, so if you don't have time to come to campus, uh, feel free to check out some of those um, virtual visits, but we are offering in-person on-campus visits, uh, Monday through Friday, whatever time of day works for you. All righty. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Okay, next up we're over to Southern Illinois University with Casey, I believe. Yep, can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, you're good. Good stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and set my timer because I tend to be long-winded and that's okay. Um, so, as stated before, we are Southern Illinois University here in Carbondale, Illinois. Um, a little bit about myself before I present. My name is Casey, as stated before. Um, I am from St. Louis, Missouri originally. I am a two-time alum here. I got my bachelor's in 2015 and my master's in December of last year with a teaching certificate. And so I am really excited to have the opportunity to speak with you guys today. So a little bit about SIU. Uh, we want you to be great. So our, our caption at the bottom of the screen says, be a Saluki. A Saluki is our mascot. Uh, it is an Egyptian dog. And so here at SIU, I always tell my students that greatness happens here. We want you to max out in your potential and to become a great, uh, not only a great student, but a great contributor to uh, whatever career field you're looking to go into. So here's some fun facts. Uh, we are among the top 5% of all U.S. higher education institutions. Our student to uh, faculty ratio is 13 to 1. We have over 200 programs of study. Uh, we offered uh, recently a bachelor's degree in nursing and radiological sciences. Uh, we have a really good engineering and business program. Uh, we have undergraduates can, uh, can start their research if you're interested in going into any research field as early as their freshman year. All right, so this is a glimpse of our student rec center. Uh, as a student and as an incoming freshman, you'll have access to all of these uh, that are listed uh, with your student ID, what we call a debit dog or your dog tag. That is your, I call it your social security card for campus. Um, those eight digits that will be assigned to you will get you into uh, the dining halls, the rec center, you'll be allowed to print on campus. You basically need it <laughs> to survive here at SIU at Carbondale. 
All right, so let's talk a little bit about housing. We have two main housing facilities. One is West Campus, which is this lake area right here that's called Thompson Point. And then this side is East Campus, and these are our towers. There are three of them. So this year, uh, with our rooms, we are doing single rooms. So you will be surprised at how much students do with these single rooms. And so with these, you will be guaranteed, um, if you were to sign up for a student housing, you'll have the anytime meal plan uh, with the dorms. All utilities are included. You get cable internet, access to computer labs on every floor, a furnished room, AC heat, and a living learning community. Basically what that is in short is basically everybody on your floor will be uh, in your same major. And so basically these would be people that you can go to class with as well as live with. So that's kind of cool, especially if you um, are interested in creating study groups, you don't have to go far because everybody will basically be on your floor. So this is our dining facility. So we have two on campus. One is True Blood and one is Lentz. Uh, Lentz is associated with West Campus, which is in Thompson Point. And True Blood is associated with the towers. So what we're doing now, which is very different than my freshman year, uh, we have an anytime meal plan. So it, it literally is what it says. Anytime you are hungry, anytime you can eat, as long as the dining halls are open. So the dining halls open at 7 a.m. and they close at 9 p.m. So as long as you're hungry, you can take that debit dog I mentioned earlier, swipe in, swipe out and it's buffet style dining if you have allergies our chefs are super nice um, they can provide both vegan and veggie uh, food options and so uh, even if you have allergies you can communicate that with one of our chefs and they'll be sure to always have an option for you when you come and you eat so let's keep it moving oh and really quick with our um, housing facilities you are able to um, contract for $150 is a down payment when the housing portal opens. You get to go in on the selected date and then choose your room. And if you are many of the, um, if you are one of the individuals who wanted your own room, you can indicate that. And then you can also indicate if you prefer to have a roommate as well. I don't want to skip over that. All right, so about our dog pound and our sports. So this is the SIU arena. So here we host our graduations, our basketball games, um, and any major big concert we have, nine times out of 10, it'll be held in our arena. Uh, we are 15 NCAA Division I sports. We have new teams. What you see down here is our Saluki mascot engaging with the crowd, as they often tend to do. Um, and it's really fun. And this is also free to students. So you don't have to pay anything additional to attend any of our sporting events. All right, so here at SIU, I encourage all students to get involved. We have over 300 registered student organizations or what we call as RSOs, and they range from the following, whether they be academic, Greek life, student government, professional, you name it. And if you don't see it, all you have to do is find you an academic advisor and find you some other friends that are interested in creating an RSO, and then that could be yours as well. All right, so we want you to get in on this. I have loved being a Saluki, I think for the past 10 years now, um, and I have participated in all of these. I was provided opportunities to study in DC. I went to Rome for six weeks to study law. I was a part of the honors program. We have opportunities for you to be supported and for you to advance in your educational career. All right. Let's talk a little bit about money. A lot of people get overwhelmed, don't get overwhelmed. We have here at SIU in-state tuition for everybody, whether you live in California or Florida, you are considered in-state. 90% of our students receive some type of financial assistance, so nobody's ever coming out of pocket uh, completely for what tuition is. And roughly that number is about 25,000. Right, so SIU also funds over 600 scholarships on our own. Um, you would have to complete, after once you complete the application, you will go to our general scholarship application and these will match you up with scholarships pertaining specifically to your major. So if you don't, if you don't believe that you will qualify for any of our merit-based scholarships, you would go to our general scholarship app and see if you can find yourself some money that way. All right, so this is just an overview of the ranks of scholarships that we have. These have been revamped. So we have our Saluki Gold, Saluki Silver, and our Saluki Maroon based on uh, these methods of merit. And this is what you'll get. Oh man, my six minutes is up. All right, so my name's Casey. I'm going to skip to this screen. Take out your phone, Snapchat that, I'll take a picture of that, and that'll take you to our website so you can apply. Thanks guys for listening. Awesome, thank you, Casey. Okay, and last but certainly not least, we are going to go to Missouri University of Science and Technology with Vanessa. All right, thank you so much. 
So yeah, my name is Vanessa and I'm with Missouri University of Science and Technology. That's kind of a mouthful. So we like to call it Missouri s and for s for short. And um, I'm going to be talking first about where we're located. So we're in Rolla, which is about halfway between St. Louis and Springfield, Missouri. So right on I-44, um, Route 66. So it's a gorgeous area. Rolla is kind of a small town with just over about 20,000 residents and another 50,000 come in from other communities for uh, shopping, dining, and entertainment. Rolla is a part of the Ozark Highlands, so you'll find a lot of lakes and rivers, streams, and people go fishing, swimming, kayaking, and do other types of, types of boating as well. There are a ton of caves to explore, um, zip lines to maneuver, and uh, 300 area, acres of city parks as well with over 10 miles of walking and biking. So it's a gorgeous place for a lot of outdoor activities. But it's a nice balance of urban development and small town charm. So I think regardless of where you're coming from and what you're looking, what you're looking for, you will, um, you will find it here. Here are just some of the rankings that we're really proud of. We were actually founded in 1870 as one of the first technological universities west of the Mississippi. So this year we're celebrating our 150th anniversary, which has been really fun. So just some of these here, you can see we're ranked the number one public engineering university in the nation, um, number one university in Missouri for salary potential, um, and many more. You'll see a lot of them relate to return on investment and salary potential. We actually pretty consistently have the highest average starting salary of any Missouri school. So our students consistently go on to get really, really excellent, excellent jobs. We were also ranked in 2019 the 20th safest campus in the nation. Last year, we actually got bumped up to 19th safest campus. So um, also something that we're really proud of. In October 2020, so this is actually pretty recent news, we received the largest ever single gift in the history of Missouri higher education. Uh, one of our um, alumni, two of our alumni, <laughs> the Comer uh, family, they donated $300 million to our university. So we're really excited to use those funds to continue to extend um, innovation and economic development, new research and construction of new buildings, as well as providing additional scholarships to incoming students. So moving on to some of our academic opportunities, we have a wide variety of majors, including math, biology, chemistry, and physics, um, going along with our um, science and technology name. But we also have some excellent humanity programs. Um, if you want to study English, history, philosophy, um, we have a AA CSB accredited business program and teacher certifications at all levels, as well as some pre-professional programs. So if you wanna go on to law school or med school or anything like that, we can definitely get you prepared for that. However, what we are probably best known for are our engineering programs. And we have one of the most diverse offerings in the country. We have 15 different engineering majors, each offering several different emphasis areas. And we also have a first year career exploration program so that introduces students to all of our different engineering degrees. So if you're not sure what type of engineering you wanna go into, it's okay, you'll learn about all of these. Um, but we have several minors as well that aren't listed here, including biomedical engineering, explosives engineering, which is always a fun one to talk about, uh, humanitarian engineering, and some others as well. We also have a brand new global engineering program. So um, you can earn two bachelor's degrees in five years and um, study any kind of engineering and then get a BA in interdisciplinary studies as well. So you would take some foreign language courses and actually spend a semester doing an internship abroad and then doing an additional semester studying abroad. So you may be wondering what students do besides study at s and um, We have over 250 clubs and organizations. We are an extremely active um, campus. Our students are involved with a lot of things. Um, including um, music, theater, sports, athletics, anything you can imagine. Um, one of the things that's pretty unique to s is we have 19 student design teams and they are often top finishers in their competition. So our Mars Rover team has placed um, first in the, in the world actually, they, they went on to the international competition and a lot of others place very, very high on, on national levels as well. We have um, Greek life and study abroad opportunities, as I mentioned, and many more things that we hope you will get involved with. 
So you can apply for admission using the Common App or on our website. Um, both are completely free to you. Um, we do not need an essay or anything else. So we try to make it as, as easy as possible for you to apply. Um, we are still accepting applications for fall 2021 and you can apply test optional as well. So you would just send in your transcripts and, um, and then you'd be good to go. All right. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me or any of us who work in the admissions office. We are always excited to talk with you. Um, and we also have on-campus visits. So we have virtual visits you can sign up for. Um, you can often meet with departments one-on-one -on -one if you wanna meet with any of our faculty, a lot of them are available. Um, and you get to do that as well when you come to campus. So we hope to see you soon. Thank you so much. Great, thank you, Vanessa. Okay, well, we have a few minutes left of our session. So what I'm going to do is ask all of our presenters, if you could hop back on camera. Um, we have a few questions that we're going to ask you. And so we'll just go in the same order that we started with. So the first question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? If you just want to take 30 seconds or so to answer this. Um, and I don't remember. Caitlin, we started with you last time, if you want to kick us off. Yes. Okay, perfect. So my advice to you when you are in your college decision process and just exploring schools is visit the schools that you're interested in, because you're not going to get a good idea of how the fit is and how you can see yourself there without visiting campus. Um, so yeah, just visit campus, see what all there is to offer, see how you feel when you're walking around and um, try them all out. <laughs> Here, I would recommend that you go apply for every external scholarship you, you qualify for. Community scholarships are a great way to do that. So if you're in a small town, seek them out. So go look for your service organizations, Rotary, Prince Hall, Masons, the Divine Nine Fraternities and Sororities. All of these organizations have scholarships that can typically go to any university or college that you choose to go to. So that's why community scholarships are such a big thing. I would say you reach out to your admission counselor. All of us here, I think we would agree that we wanna hear from you um, and we're here to answer your questions. And so ask those tough questions. Uh, we want to hear from you. Like we get excited, at least for me, to hear from our students. And I like sit in my email, just waiting for students to reach out to me to answer their questions. Um, so definitely reach out to your admission counselor, ask them any questions that you have, because if we don't know it, we're gonna find the, the people with the answers. Um, I would say pick a school that you feel most at home at. Don't pick a school because it's convenient or more affordable. If you find a college campus that you really feel best fits you and your interests and your needs, um, I say go for that school. Like I said, don't pick one that you feel is more convenient than the other. I would definitely say um, it's okay to not know what you want to do for the rest of your life. Um, I can say right now, as a grown up, I still don't know what I want to do. So give yourself grace uh, to be flexible with your major decisions. Uh, make sure you do something that you're passionate about and not just something that um, would be a good pay grade or a good pay fit for you. Yeah, I'll second what Casey said. Um, it's your job now to figure out what your what your interests are and what your skills are and then college can help you find a major that that kind of overlaps with those so in looking for colleges. Um, ask what the college can can do for you and your personal and professional development, um, not just in picking a major but outside of the classes too. make sure you're getting a uh, or applying for a school that has great hands on learning opportunities so that um, as some of my other colleagues mentioned you can you can graduate with some experience under your belt. Perfect. Okay, well, I think we have time for one more question. So our last question will be, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? I know some of you mentioned favorite events or traditions, so feel free to expand on it or pick another one to share. So Caitlin, we'll start with you again. Okay, perfect. So um, I talked a little bit about homecoming because homecoming is so huge here. It is my favorite event. We It's a week-long event. Um, we start on Sunday and go through Saturday with the game obviously ending everything, but every day there's a different event for you to um, attend, whether it be dyeing our fountain orange and having the opening ceremony there or running the 5K, which not me, but if you're interested in that, we have that for you. Um, there's different things to do every day of the week and it really is a great time and the population of Stillwater triples um, during that week. So it's a great time. 
and our alumni are amazing. I'll follow up with our homecoming as well. At Langston University, the whole state kind of diverges to Langston, Oklahoma for that whole week. We start off with Gospel Fest. We have big name artists, for instance, Cat Williams, Kevin Hart, Michael Blackson, all these big names come for our homecoming and our students get to choose who comes. We've also had Little Wayne, uh, Boosie, multiple big name artists, Future, YF and Lucy come to our campus. And we'll start with Gospel Fest, of course, to get right. So if you, a little bit of rats and a little bit of fun, a whole lot of networking. So Langston's homecoming is second to none. I would say Drake Relays is my favorite tradition. It is the second largest track meet in the country. Even if you don't like track and don't know anything about it like me, it's so cool to see high school, college athletes, and even Olympians uh, try to like qualify for state or even the Olympics, especially coming up here in 2021. And there's a lot of mini traditions that go along with Drake Relays. It's like our second homecoming. It happens in a, over a week in April. Um, and it's really cool that all Drake students get to go to that for free. and. Um, just seeing all these amazing athletes and all the fun traditions and probably free t-shirts and food that come with it. Uh, one of my favorite traditions is if our football team is in the playoffs, getting ready to play national championships on our campus and we win, our spectators will storm the field, rip out the goalpost and carry it and throw it into Colden Pond. Um, they will then carry the other one up to the town square and they will cut it into pieces and distribute it out to the spectators. So it's a really cool tradition and there's a funny joke on our campus saying that we have about six full posts in the bottom of our pond. So <laughs> it just makes it really fun and it creates a lot of memories for students and alumni and just people in town as well. I would say for SIU here in Carbondale would definitely be our week of welcome. So we ascribe one week before classes starts for uh, students and their families to come and live in Carbondale basically for a week. And every day we have different activities, both fun and semi-studious to help get students acquainted with campus. So we of course have our, um, our watermelon fest. You get to throw a pie in the chancellor's face. Uh, you get to walk around campus so you can actually identify where your classes are. That way you won't you know, do something like I did. I said, down in the middle of the street and I cried because I was lost. Um, <laughs> I didn't participate in Welcome Week. That was my thing. Uh, we have bungee houses uh, that you can like just be a kid with, you know, with your parents, you know, you get free um, access to the events, to the games that entire week uh, before your parents leave on that Sunday to go back home. So I would definitely say it's the week of welcome. The best ever St. Pat's is in Rolla every year. And if you have not had the chance to come for that, this is your year. <laughs> um, so it's it's a huge event here in Rolla and we partner with the community in a lot of ways. So there's always um, parades and um, all kinds of great events downtown. But our students are have been counting down to this year's St. Pat's since like last August. So, you know, every year it's a huge thing. They're always selling sweatshirts all year round. And it's just a really, really fun, um, fun thing to be a part of, especially as it's becoming spring and, and everyone's you know, spirits are high from that. So that's that's probably the, the biggest thing. That's why my background is green. <laughs> Great, well, thank you all so much for sharing. Thanks to our presenters for joining us and thank you to the students who uh, took the time to learn more about the colleges that you're interested in today as well. So when you close the Zoom window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. If you don't mind filling that out for us, we'd really appreciate any feedback that you do have. Um, also, don't forget, this is just one of many sessions being offered, so check the StriveScan website for any additional sessions you might be interested in, as well as the recording of this presentation as well. And then um, we will also be hosting another virtual college fair for you in April, so um, be sure to keep an eye out for those details coming to you soon. So thanks again for joining us. Have a great afternoon, and we will see you in the next session.